Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator of Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we are doing another ship comparison video. This one's going to be a little bit different because we won't be comparing a battleship. Uh, and the reason for that is we are celebrating, remembering, uh, the 75th anniversary of the first use of nuclear warheads over the next two week period. We're calling this series of videos our nuclear fortnight. Uh, so for the first video in that series, we are comparing the battleship New Jersey with the world's first nuclear powered surface combatant, the cruiser Long Beach, CGN-9. Long Beach was built barely a decade after Battleship New Jersey, uh, and she was the last cruiser by some measures. While we have built cruisers since Long Beach, uh, leading up to the Ticonderoga class still in service today, all current cruisers have been based off of frigate or destroyer hulls. Long Beach was the last of the true cruisers, the last hull in the cruiser evolution. She was laid down in 1957, launched in 1959, and commissioned in 1961. That four-year building period is very similar to a battleship. At 721 feet long, she's longer than most battleships. 71 and a half feet wide, she's extremely narrow as a cruiser should be, and she draws 30 feet of water, uh, give or take. She served all the way up until 1995, after 33 years, uh, and was decommissioned. Part of her hull, over 400 feet of her midsection, is still at the Puget Sound uh, Naval Yard because she is nuclear powered, even though the reactors have been defueled, a significant part of her is still there. While she is as long as a battleship and took nearly as long as a battleship to build, she only displaces 15,500 tons, uh, which doesn't even make her the heaviest cruiser, although she's among the longest. She has two nuclear reactors, each one creating steam that powers one of two turbines, which powers one of two propellers. With this propulsion plant, she has 80,000 shaft horsepower, so something like a third of what Battleship New Jersey has, but because of her great length to beam ratio and significantly lighter weight, almost a quarter the weight, she probably exceeds New Jersey's maximum speed. As with most nuclear powered ships, any entry you find about her speed just says in excess of 30 knots. It's most likely in excess of 35 knots if needed. Her crew of 1160 men is significantly smaller than the battleship, but significantly more than modern surface warships. Part of this has to do with her nuclear propulsion, which even though the Navy started to switch to nuclear powered surface ships, uh, particularly cruisers during the Cold War, by the end of the Cold War, they were all being decommissioned because of the high cost of manpower, training, uh, and refueling for these ships. So we have reverted back to uh, fuel powered vessels of various types. In terms of armament, Long Beach was built with a single twin-armed Talos long-range anti-air missile at the stern, two twin carrier mid-range surface-to-air missiles at the bow, two single-mount 5-inch 38 guns mounted amidship, along with an ASRock anti-submarine rocket projector uh, and two triple anti-submarine torpedo tubes. Eventually, her armament was modified so that the Talos at the fantail was replaced by a pair of four-cell uh, 
Tomahawk armored box launchers. The Terrier missiles at the bow were replaced with the Mark 10 twin armed uh, SM-1 surface air missiles and a pair of 20 millimeter phalanxes added close in anti-aircraft defense. So, Long Beach is an excellent anti-aircraft escort. She has a number of anti-aircraft weapons for long, medium, and even close-in work. However, her anti-ship and uh, shore bombardment weapons are much lacking. So if you're comparing weapons with the battleship, the, you're comparing two different ships that do two different jobs. Uh, in the 1980s, New Jersey's uh, missiles included 32 Tomahawk cruise missiles, 16 harpoons, uh, of which, as far as I can tell, Long Beach never carried them, even though they're a contemporary system and fairly easy to bolt on. Uh, when it comes to gunnery, there's no comparison. Long Beach was initially designed without guns at all, and President Kennedy had to step in and uh, insist that two guns were added side by side on the beam amidship. Their uh, fields of fire are not great, but at least there's a backup in case the missiles go down. Uh, in terms of cost, Long Beach initially cost $320 million, uh, which is approximately $2.74 billion today. So, similar cost to the battleship. That cost isn't in material, it's in technology. All of the sensors and computer equipment uh, and the fact that she's a prototype and a one-off. Like New Jersey has the benefit of being the last class built in a series that progressively built off of each other and one of six vessels authorized in that class. Uh, Long Beach was the only one authorized and uh, even though her hull is the last in the cruiser series, most of her technology, electronics, weapons were fairly new uh, and her propulsion plant was brand new on a surface warship. And a lot of the things that went into her design ended up being uh, prototypes for things which would go into the later Enterprise and first steps into what would become the later nuclear-powered cruisers. Uh, in particular, her SCANFAR radar system, which is why she had that weird boxy superstructure amidships, which was later adopted in Enterprise, uh, is the prototype to the modern Aegis weapon system still found on cruisers and destroyers in the U.S. Navy. Long Beach, in fact, on a number of occasions, was uh, set up to be retrofitted for Aegis when she got refueled the next time, uh, but even though the designs were drawn up, it never happened. Refueling was too expensive and uh, her haul was disposed of. Uh, in 1963, she participated in sea orbit along with the nuclear powered uh, USS Bainbridge and the nuclear powered carrier Enterprise. And those three ships did uh, something very similar to the Great White Fleet's voyage uh, in sailing around the world demonstrating the power projection of the U.S. Navy, particularly through nuclear-powered vessels, which were able to stay at sea for over a month, uh, traveling tens of thousands of miles at an average speed of about 25 knots. In terms of combat, Long Beach saw her fair share off Vietnam. She escorted carriers like Enterprise as an air defense warfare ship, and she also operated off the coast uh, in an air defense warfare role, uh, particularly making sure that enemy aircraft did not try to uh, get in among American aircraft returning to their carriers uh, as a way of attacking the American fleet offshore. And in this capacity, she was able to detect enemy aircraft on a number of occasions. And uh, sometimes she vectored friendly fighters in to shoot them down. Uh, and on at least two occasions, she engaged them with her surface-to-air missiles and shot them down herself. She 
may well be the uh, first warship to shoot down an enemy aircraft with surface-to-air missiles. She also served in the Persian Gulf War as part of Battleship Missouri's battle group Echo, which she escorted for a period of time. Prior to serving with Battle Group Echo, she was the flagship of Battle Group Romeo, which included the Battleship New Jersey. So these two ships operated alongside each other in the Pacific uh, on a number of occasions in the late 80s. The reason they operated alongside each other is because they do such different things. Long Beach was set up to be a flagship. Uh, New Jersey lost that capacity during her 80s reconfiguration. Uh, Long Beach is an excellent anti-aircraft asset. Uh, New Jersey post-Korea was not a very effective anti-aircraft ship. She was never retrofitted with the modern technologically advanced uh, anti-aircraft systems that modern ships have. So even though she has the phalanx for close-in work, she's got no medium or long-range anti-aircraft capacity. But Long Beach has proven systems uh, so she made an excellent escort to the fleet. So while New Jersey is great at shore bombardment, is great at uh, fighting surface ships, particularly at close range, she doesn't have the anti-aircraft capacity that a cruiser like Long Beach can bring to the table. Uh, and virtually no anti-aircraft capacity when you compare it to the more modern Aegis-class cruisers. Uh, that makes it extremely difficult to compare these two ships. For a similar cost, you get a much larger platform in New Jersey. Uh, both ships are fairly expensive to operate. Long Beach has more manpower required, but also more safety features for her nuclear power. Uh, refueling, New Jersey has to refuel about every 30 days, two and a half million gallons of diesel in the 80s. Uh, Long Beach has to refuel about every decade or so. Um, so that is an expensive proposition that involves cutting the ship open to remove parts of the reactors and add more fuel. Uh, which does make an excellent time to rebuild the ship and upgrade things. Uh, and both ships are fairly large, so they could receive massive upgrades over their careers. Uh, New Jersey was in the Navy for a longer period of time, although Long Beach was a commissioned warship for a longer period of time. Uh, New Jersey got more battle stars over her career. But... Uh, getting nine for World War II. We just haven't had a naval war like that, so it's very hard for modern ships to compare to uh, World War II warships in, in terms of battle stars. Uh, so this comes down to a really tough comparison. They're, they're just not doing the same job. Uh, New Jersey has more room for growth, and with uh, infinite resources, you can reconfigure this hull to do anything. You want a more effective anti-aircraft vessel, well, there's the reserve of buoyancy on here to do that, uh, and you're going to get a much more survivable ship. Uh, for speed, they're pretty comparable for endurance. Fuel-wise, there's no comparison. Long Beach can sail for 10 years without refueling. Uh, New Jersey cannot, especially at high speed. At the end of the day, Long Beach and New Jersey each represent the pinnacle of their respective types of vessels, battleships and cruisers. And they are the pinnacle because they grew so large and expensive that no other ships of that type could be afforded. They, they priced themselves out of a job. So Long Beach represents the maximum size of a cruiser hull prior to uh, smaller types of ships such as destroyers and frigates, which have also grown in size, uh, becoming larger and uh, in some cases being arbitrarily named cruisers because of their size. Uh, the trend to watch for here is destroyers once escorted 
ships like New Jersey. And now they are some of the largest surface warfare vessels and most capable ones in the world. And the larger cruisers and battleships have gone away. Uh, even nuclear power on surface ships has more or less gone away. While it still has its place on uh, submarines operating underwater and large aircraft carriers, uh, it is far too expensive on a uh, large surface ship, which is why all the cruisers were decommissioned and why no nuclear-powered battleships have been built. How the heck would you refuel a nuclear-powered battleship if you have to cut open the hull, uh, the thinnest armor on this ship is at least three layers thick uh, and six inches to cut through and then put back in place if you've got to refuel this ship after a decade. Uh, so nuclear powered battleships would be a tough thing to design. Stay tuned over the next two weeks as we approach the 75th anniversary of dropping the atomic bomb and entering the nuclear age. Drop questions and comments in the comment section down below. Let us know what some other ships are you'd like us to discuss in future videos. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and check the description below for ways that you can support the museum and our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.